Today, we're gonna to talk about the web trends for 2022, the ones that you absolutely need to know. Today, we wanna to talk about the web trends that you need to know as a web developer for 2022. And to give you a bullet list of things that we're gonna talk about today, first, we're gonna talk about NBC, specifically around forms and postback technologies um, that is going on today. In today's world, we call this the mainstream development. The second thing that we want to talk about is Web API, and that's more what the larger companies and the larger projects are going through. We'll go through that. And third is something not as used as much, but it's something that we all need to know, which is serverless functions. So let's get into MVC first. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is what we're going to call the mainstream technologies or the mainstream way people are building web applications right now. If you look at the job boards, you still will see a lot of jobs using this, what I'm going to call form based projects or post back projects. Now, inside the Microsoft world, that is typically web forms, which is actually going to be deprecated, but you'll still see a lot of web forms things out there. But also increasingly, you see a lot of MVC projects out there or Razor pages. Now, both of these are based around a form, which means that we post a form to the server the server takes that data from the form. It does things with it in the business logic, may go to the database, get some other values, and then it actually generates an HTML page and passes that HTML all the way back to the server so that the entire page is generated on the server side. That's why how people have been doing it for the last probably 20 years. And so there's a lot of what we're gonna call legacy or mainstream projects out there that are built this way, which means there's tons of opportunity for you to break in to do this, or if you're out there as a web dev and you've been doing other things, it's definitely something you need to know because a lot of jobs that you may run into say, hey, I need you to build this in NBC, or I need to, you to look at this web forms projects, and you can make a lot of money doing that. Now, here's the thing that I wanna caution you with. At Coder Foundry, we are teaching NBC right now because we believe the now is more important than kind of what the future is gonna be. So I want you to focus on if you're trying to break in, the now is more important than the next, next, next greatest thing. So focus on the now, and then we can get you into that first job. That's why we're still teaching MVC in our bootcamp, and we also are teaching it in our self-paced course. So you may be asking yourself the question, why would I want to learn something that's going to go out of date really quickly? Well, first off, I don't think it's going out of date really quickly. Microsoft still invests heavily into these technologies, and there's a reason why. Number one, they are blazingly fast, especially SP.NET with NBC and Razor Pages. Those are blazingly fast. The second thing is with .NET 5 and going forward, ASP now runs on Linux, it runs on Windows, it runs anywhere. In fact, here at Coder Foundry, we actually push our ASP.NET projects to Heroku, which traditionally isn't something that you can do. But now with .NET 5 and .NET 6, um, we can easily push that to any kind of host that we want. That means we can host it on Azure, we can host it on AWS. And as we said, we're hosting on Heroku. So anyone that has a Linux based host, you can get your stuff running there. So it's also very easy to build these CRUD apps. And sometimes you just need something that has an admin page, I, I enter some values, and then I display that value on a dashboard or something like that. MEC and Razor Pages are tailor-made for those applications, and it makes it real easy to do it. So it's time to market, it's speed of execution when you get it built, and it's easy to do. And that's why a lot of companies are still staying with that technology instead of embracing some of the other newer ways to do it. So the next trend we want to talk about, and this is really not necessarily an emerging trend. This isn't like brand new technologies. People have been building RESTful services for a long time. But what we're seeing now inside the consulting company, and recently I talked to the lead architect at United Airlines and talked about how they're building their site. And they're using Web API on the back end and React on the front end. And then when I say United Airlines, I truly mean United Airlines ticketing, baggage claim, the entire thing to run the airlines is they're re-architecting their sites away from some of the form based, based like MVC into this newer way of doing it, which you're building a REST services back end using Web API and C Sharp and then putting React and sometimes maybe Angular on the front end. One of the trends that you will see, I think in 2022 is, not only will you see React and Web API combo together, 
Angular and Web API combo together, but increasingly you're going to see Blazor WebAssembly taking a place in there as a third way of doing this. Now there's other JavaScript front end libraries out there, but let's talk a little bit about how the back end is constructed and how that differs from MVC. Now with Web API, what we do is we return JSON data to the front end and it's just data. Whereas in MVC, we return an actual HTML page or what we call a view to the front end. And so now you have to bring in your own front end library to bind those to HTML elements so you can display an actual HTML page. Now, increasingly, a lot of people are using React as the front end library and Web API will see sharp on the back end. You also will see Angular TypeScript with the back end of Web API. And like I said before, we're going to start seeing a lot of Blazor WebAssembly to do that. Now, I'm already seeing customers of ours using um, Blazor to be able to build front ends because they really like the nicety of writing C-sharp on the back end, and then they can take that same language and write it on the front end. They also has a really nice component-based library. And even though Angular and React have similar mechanisms, it makes it real nice for them to be able to build components that they can reuse um, and to help them design and build out their applications. Now, one of the things about Web API is get it to scale. Now there's a lot of different architectures behind this, and I don't want to go into all of those where people are building microservices, monolithic services, all of those things are built on the same technology of Web API. It's just how you're putting these together. Now the th other thing that's missing that I haven't talked about yet is how do we secure these Web APIs? Now the first thing that, you, that we are going to teach inside of our course is um, JSON Web Tokens or JWT. This allows us to be able to make sure that our endpoints are secure. We can apply roles, authentication, authorization, and a host of other things using that. Now, the cool thing about Web API under C Sharp and Visual Studio is that is kind of built in. We don't have to roll our own security. We don't have to bring in other third party libraries to secure it. It's all built in natively inside of Web API, and that makes it very attractive for these large vendors to do that because they want to make sure they have something proven and tested on the security end, especially if you run a ticketing or baggage claim or things like that, it has to be proven. And that's been proven on the C-sharp backend. So Web API, bring your own JavaScript libraries. React definitely is going to be used in 2022. Angular definitely going to be used in 2022. And you're going to see WebAssembly more and more in 2022 as well. So the third trend, which isn't a new trend, but you'll see a lot of, and I think you need to add this to your tool belt if you don't have it already, which is serverless functions. Now, I don't think serverless functions are ever going to go into like these large scale projects. I'll probably get a lot of comments saying we're doing it large scale. Um, I think that if you're um, using serverless functions, they're going to be for smaller type projects. And once it goes large scale, we're going to go back to the Web API we talked about previously. But they are very useful because with a serverless function, I don't have to know about hosting or service servers or anything like that. I can just simply write my function, deploy it to AWS or maybe um, Azure functions. Um, and then I don't have to worry about how it's hosted or how it runs or anything like that. Now, there is some setup on your end that makes it a little bit more complicated than, say, running an MVC project or Web API. But, if, hey, if you're into service function, you're coding already, this really isn't a deterrent. You can get it set up so that you can run locally and deploy when you want to. Now, there's another vendor out there, Netlify, that allows you also to write serverless functions. Uh, but it is simply written on top of AWS and it's their flavor of how you get that running. So either way, what I would be learning right now is serverless functions on AWS and serverless functions or called Azure functions on Azure. And I think that's the two major, major vendors that you should concern yourself with on how to do this. Now, what is it useful for? Well, I think one of the great uses for serverless functions are hiding credentials to like third-party APIs. Let's say that you're writing something like a movie pro app like we do here at the self based course. And we're using a third party library to bring in movie data like posters, cast and crew and those kind of things. But we don't want to expose our key to the general public. So we will hide that key in a back end, either Web API or a serverless function where um, that will do the communication to our third party API. Our key is not exposed that way. And we just return data to our front end and display it like we normally would. And so I think that's a great use for you if you're just beginning and you want to learn, like, what would I use the service function for? 
hey, get a third party API, hide the key in a serverless function, use that to integrate with your third party API and not call it just from the front end of your JavaScript site. So serverless functions is something you definitely, if you don't already have, need to add to your tool belt this year. So if you're a first time learner or you're trying to further your career along, we believe that the three trends is something that you need to look into. Um, again, all of ours are based around C Sharp and ASP.NET. Of course, we teach that in our class. There are other ways you can do it, but we believe that that is going to give you the best opportunity to break into this industry or to further your career forward. A lot of the companies that we're talking to are using these technologies. Therefore, the large enterprise projects are going to be largely dominated by something like Web API or MVC. So we're so confident in these three web trends that we're going to add Web API with JWT to our self-paced course. In fact, if you want to learn to code, go to learn.coderfounding.com. We'll teach you about MVC, we'll teach you about web development, and we'll get you on the road to that first web development job. So I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding. <laughs>